My name is Tim Early. Yes, I was born and raised here in Jacksonville, North Carolina. I've uh, been here all my life and uh, have uh, raised my family here. I was raised on this river as well as, you know, just spending a lot of time with, with my child, my wife, uh, enjoying our resources here of the river. Uh, my earliest memory of the river was with my dad and uh, several other seniors that uh, we would go up to the headwaters of New River and uh, use bow nets to uh, harvest uh, hickory shad or herring. And we would come back and, and uh, we would all clean the fish and uh, um, cook them right here on an open fire and uh, you know, with grease and everything. It was uh, a pretty cool time. It, it certainly meant a lot to me. So I have uh, passed those traditions on to my child and my other, other children also in our community. Uh, just this past weekend, not far down the river right here, we caught flounder and, and trout and drum and uh, saw a lot of uh, shrimp. I, my uh, child was very amazed that we had left the uh, plug out of our live well. And I went to put a fish in the live well and uh, uh, looked in there and there were thousands of juvenile shrimp. So it's, uh, you know, it just shows us that we have a very diverse ecosystem here and, and uh, our resources coming back, especially with a lot of things that have happened with the Wilson Bay to, to uh, replenish you know, what, what is here. But as far as the children uh, and my family, yeah, we spend a lot of time on the river. Uh, it's, it's very important to me to spend uh, time with my, my child, my wife, and, uh, and other youth of this community to, to make sure that you know, they get a good foundation under them of, of what is here and, and what this does mean to them rather than being out in, in other areas of, of this community doing other things. So. I'm owner operator of Coastal Retention Pond Services as well as Coastal Lawn Services and early construction. Uh, basically what we do here is uh, we take care of several hundred uh, stormwater treatment facilities uh, within a 70 mile radius of Jacksonville and uh, in some cases we take care of the entire complexes, commercial complexes, the mowing, the stormwater aspects of that and uh, we do all the maintenance on these facilities to make sure that they're running in as high of uh, efficient level as they possibly can to make sure that nitrates and phosphates, fecal chloroform, microbials, microbials aren't going into our watershed out here to protect that. Um, another thing that we do that we find that we uh, have a, a large abundance of is the trash that we find in the stormwater treatment facilities. They, they really are a filter for that also, and it keeps uh, that trash from going into these watersheds, so other people along the river have a very, very nice and clean uh, experience as they go up and down our, our river. Uh, what are stormwater treatment facilities? They are BMPs, they're best management practices that, that have been put into place such as uh, retention ponds, dry retention basins, we have wetland basins, we have sand filters. Um, there, there's many different types of uh, stormwater treatment facilities or BMPs. A lot of times you might be in a parking lot and it might look like a very, very nice laid out planter, but that could very well be a bioretention filter that has been put right in the middle of that parking lot. So. Uh, these things can be right in front of you and you would never recognize them unless you really knew what you were looking at. Uh, they are extremely important for our watershed to make sure they, they are basically an environmental filter that stops, as I said earlier, uh, the uh, microbials, microbials, fecal chloroform, phosphates, nitrates, which is fertilizer. Um, from going off into our watershed. Um, there's many things that can occur if these, uh, not necessarily toxins, but the, if these uh, chemicals get into our watershed, it could have an adverse effect on our uh, shellfish, our shrimp, fish, oysters, scallops, clams, as well as you know, uh, in areas where uh, we have a lot of swimming going on. If these uh, chemicals were high, the levels were very high, it probably wouldn't be an ideal situation to be swimming in those particular areas. So that, that's what these filters actually do. They reduce uh, those actual uh, chemicals. Uh, I've been a member of the round table for approximately four years, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, it's very important to me to be a member of the round table so I can sit face to face with 
like-minded people that do have a uh, interest or stakeholders in this river and the surrounding watersheds to make sure that that we can hear everything that everybody else is doing. You So often you'll see uh, industries or, or different uh, departments throughout the state that they probably don't ever talk to each other and in this scenario it gives us a, a wonderful opportunity to lay what everybody's been doing down on the table so we can see and learn from that collectively rather than separately. Uh, what do I bring to the New River Roundtable that uh, the others don't? I, I think we all deal in water but uh, we are out in the nuts and bolts of the uh, stormwater watershed and, and as far as the BMPs, the retention ponds, uh, sand filters, things such as that. Um, and we, we get an opportunity to see what is actually happening on the beginning of the watershed and we can bring that information back to the round table so that information can be passed on and go forward to other divisions or, or other industries. What is my goal by sitting on the round table short term, long term? Uh, short term we're doing that now. We're, we're definitely trying to make a difference. Uh, one of the biggest things that I enjoy doing is uh, seminars with our youth and allowing these young people to own this and once they own it they will keep everybody else in line so to speak and a simple scenario such as that is uh, a dad washing his car on the side of the road where the child will come out and say dad it would be more eco-friendly to wash that car on the grass because the grass is a filter so a lot of the times they'll actually take this and, and own it all you have to do is plant the seed and these, these children do care about what's going on uh, long-term goal uh, we're standing on the Wilson Bay which is off to my left here uh, many years ago, there was a trash, a landfill right here to my right. Um, I can't even tell you how much uh, waste has gone off in there. Uh, the Wilson Bay was actually a site for our waste uh, deposits to go off into the river. Through the years, that has been cleaned back up to a, a remarkable level with the muscles that have been put in there, just the, the aerators that have been put in. It has brought that area back where you used to could not catch any uh, aquatic species there, flounder, drum, uh, they're coming back. One of the fond memories that I have is when we used to sit on the dock, my dad and mom would take us to Fisherman's Wharf and we would sit out on the back dock at Fisherman's Wharf, we watched huge shrimp just flip across the water. We'd look down off the dock and see these massive flounder just swimming around on that sand bottom there. I would love to see that day come back to where we could go back up to the headwaters of New River and dip out herring so we'd come back and cook them right then. The spots that used to run up and down this river right here, it was phenomenal that we used to sit right here where this bridge is. and. Uh, and just catch spots by the cooler load, the stripers that used to be up in here. And you know, with all that being said, it's a resource that draws not just for the locals to come out and enjoy, but it also draws tourists to come here and spend their money and have a positive economic effect on our community. Uh, if I were to describe the New River in one word, it would be memories.